Whilst COVID remains a reality for most of us, the chances of you doing more of this, speaking to camera, will have really gone up. Now, whether it's like me and it's delivering lectures online or you're doing presentations, a big part of making things interesting is to hold your audience's attention by looking at them. But presenting to camera can be daunting, so most people will try and script what they say. But what that often means is you spend more time looking down at your notes than you do looking at your audience. Now, delivering script to camera is a real skill. The best presenters do it off the top of their heads and they make it look easy. But the trick for most is to have a version of the script that they can see and read from. Now, one way is to have somebody literally hold up a large copy of the script, often as cue cards, so that you can read them. But the more high-tech version used by most TV presenters these days is a teleprompter. Both approaches allow the presenter to read the script, but because the script's next to, or in the case of teleprompter, it's in front of the lens, it gives the impression that they're looking directly at the audience. When you're presenting for a lecture or a presentation at home using your web camera or phone camera, unless you can persuade somebody to stand behind your computer to hold your cue cards up, you might think you're out of luck. But there are some things you can try. One thing you could try is what I call the voice in the ear approach. Try recording the script for your piece as a voice memo on your phone and then Put one headphone in your ear, and as you record your video, play back the script. As the script plays, simply repeat what you hear. It can take a little bit of practice, a bit of trial and error, but you can quickly get into the rhythm of it. And if that works for you, you could take it a step further and you could get one of these earpieces. Have a look for a security style earpiece, and they're around six to eight pounds on Amazon. It sits discreetly in your ear, and you can also pretend to be a spy. Just don't talk into your sleeve during your presentation. The other thing is, make sure you get one with the right connector. Obviously, some are designed to go into radios for security people, but you can get them with phone connectors, so make sure you get the right one. Now, if the prompt in your ear doesn't appeal, then you can follow the pros and you can try a teleprompter. And whilst they look impressive, you don't really need all the hardware, thanks to several free apps for your phone or your tablet. Now, I'm using Prompt Smart Pro, which you do pay for, but a good free option for iOS and Android is the Parrot teleprompter app. It's free because it's intended to be used alongside the company's hardware, which is brilliant, but you can use it just on your phone or your tablet, as long as you position it near the camera. So a small tripod, even a bit of masking tape or blue tack would fix it into place. And if you have a separate webcam, then try clipping the camera to the phone, not to your computer. You could also, if you've got a laptop or a thin enough screen, try my patented clothes peg adapter. If you want to take things a stage further or don't have the luxury of multiple devices, there are plenty of apps that offer a prompt and let you record video at the same time. Liz Hannaford, for example, journalism lecturer I work with, recommends Video Teleprompter Lite for iOS. Now that one does add a watermark, but I guess that's not an issue if you're using it for lectures and that kind of thing. But you can shop around the various app stores for your phone and find one that suits you. And maybe, like me with Prompt Smart Pro, you'll use it enough to upgrade and remove any limitations like a watermark. Now when you're using a prompter app, there are some things that it's worth thinking about. The first thing is to practice with reading speeds. Teleprompters allow you to set a speed for the text to scroll along the screen. And it can take a little bit of trial and error to find a speed that feels natural, but also allows you to manage more complicated sentences. It's also worth saving your script with the title on the page and then some empty lines below before you get to the bit that you're actually going to read. It means you can get the script rolling on the device, set your camera recording, make yourself comfortable, and then you're ready to start reading, rather than having to press lots of buttons and rush in front of the camera. If you're recording on separate devices, as I said before, try and position your phone screen as close to the camera as you can, so that your eyes aren't drawn too far away from the lens or up and down. And step back from the lens as well. The more distance you can put between the camera and you, the less likely the audience is to see your eyes moving as you read the script. 
Now, most built-in webcams don't give you the option to zoom your camera, so you might need to give a little bit of thought to your background as you'll have more space around you or do some zooming in in post-production. Finally, if you want to keep things on one machine, you can turn your computer screen into a teleprompter using a free web-based teleprompter like qprompter.com. When you use a screen-based prompter, try again to move back from the screen. If you're too close, people will notice you're not looking directly at the camera. And again, it's worth remembering that those built-in webcams don't allow you to zoom, so think about the space around you. Another thing that you can try is resizing the browser window so that you can just see a few lines of that script at any one time. And then move the window as close as you can to the webcam. It'll set your eye line and it will stop you from reading up and down the page and drifting away from the lens. So that's it. A few different ways to help you, hopefully, present like a pro. I hope it was useful. And if you've got any useful tips or experiences to share yourself, let me know.